I hope I will be remembered for my work on black holes and the origin of the universe, not for things like appearing on The Simpsons. Parallel universes have crossed over from sci-fi movies to the realm of science. Experts have come up with theories about the subject, including the great late physicist Stephen Hawking. However, some of these theories are contradictory, and they can get confusing pretty fast as somebody would skin in the space game. Elon Musk also has something to say about the existence of parallel universes. In this video, we bring you how Elon Musk explains Stephen Hawking's terrifying theory on the multiverse. While it may be scary or creepy to think about, scientists have claimed there might be multiple instances of basically everything out there. And this is the main idea behind the multiverse theory. Before we consider what Stephen Hawking and Elon Musk have said about the topic, let's quickly run through what the multiverse is all about. But before we jump right into it, welcome back to the Cloud Boss channel. Hey, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up, oh and yeah, smash that subscribe button, and let's rock it right into today's episode. The multiverse theory suggests that how a universe, which consists of billions and billions of planets, stars and galaxies, and extends out tens of billions of light years, may not be the only universe that exists in practical terms. There could be an exact copy of you in some distant place that is the same age, the same size, the same weight, and all the other attributes, precisely identical to you to make things more interesting. There could even be two, three, or uncountable copies of you floating. The number of copies of yourself is limited only by your imagination. In this context, the universe is an all-encompassing entity that houses all the galaxies, solar systems, stars, planets, humans, animals, plants, compounds, molecules, atoms, protons, and electrons, in short, everything. In our reality, multiverse theory assumes that our universe is only a small member of an enormous composition of a multitude of universe. This means there could be another universe that is utterly different from ours with its own natural laws. Even more maddeningly, there may not be just one, but an infinite number of such universes, all of which differ from one another and harbor millions of celestial bodies and even intelligent life forms, just as our universe. Does the idea of the multiverse arose from a now widely popular theory, the inflation theory? It was developed in 1980 and filled in some information gaps where the Big Bang theory was lacking. So how does the Big Bang come in? While the Big Bang Theory was a massive explosion and explosions cause chaos, and yet the universe contains a fantastic hierarchy of planets, stars, galaxies, and galaxy clusters. The inflation theory is often seen as an extension of the Big Bang Theory, suggesting that the universe, which was as small as an expanded to cosmic proportions in a fraction of a second, it went through a period of rapid expansion and inflated to reach an incredibly large size. Simply put, the universe became massive in a very short time. This rapid expansion ended almost 13.8 billion years ago, right when the Big Bang happened. But again, perhaps it only applies to our universe. Many cosmologists believe that this rapid inflation doesn't end everywhere simultaneously. It may cease in some regions and continue in others. So while this expansion ended for our universe 13.8 billion years ago, there may be regions where inflation continued and may still be continuing creating a multitude of other universes. This will give rise to eternal inflation, which creates an ocean of individual universes. This scenario, it would be possible for each universe to develop its own laws of existence. That is, laws like unique physical forces, natural phenomena, values of fundamental constants. However, the multiverse theory has its controversies. Some believe that this is merely a fascinating proposition perpetrated by science fiction. Scientists are trying to find evidence of the existence of multiple universes by observing distortions in electromagnetic radiation left over from an early stage of the universe. Certain types of black holes can also provide clues to the existence of the multiverse. The idea of multiple universes is so astounding that it has shown up not only in cosmology and astronomy, but also in philosophy, music, literature, science fiction, and even religion. Because of the universality of this idea, these other universes are called by different names, including parallel universes, alternative universes, parallel realities, quantum realities, alternative realities, and more. 
Before his death hawking address, the multiverse theory helped to shine more light on a controversial subject. In fact, it was the subject of the last paper credited to Hawking, and he wrote it in collaboration with Professor Thomas Hertog from a KU Leuven, which was published in the Journal of High Energy Physics. The theory is based on string theory and predicts the universe is finite and far simpler than many current theories about the Big Bang say. Professor Hertog, whose work has been supported by the European Research Council, first announced the new theory at a conference at the University of Cambridge in July of 2017 organized on the occasion of Professor Hawking's 75th birthday. Meanwhile, even before this paper, Hawking had made some comments about the multiplicity of the universe in an interview in 2017. Hawking said the usual theory of eternal inflation predicts that globally, our universe is like an infinite fractal, with a mosaic of different pocket universes, separated by an inflating ocean. Hawking explained the local laws of physics and chemistry could differ from one pocket universe to another which together would form a multiverse. In their paper, Hawking and Herdog says this account of eternal inflation as a theory of the Big Bang is wrong. They said the problem with the usual account of eternal inflation is that it assumes an existing background universe that evolves according to Einstein's theory of general relativity and treats the quantum effects as small fluctuations around this. But they think the dynamics of eternal inflation wipes out the separation between classical and quantum physics. As a consequence, Einstein's theory breaks down in internal inflation. We predict that our universe on the largest scales is reasonably smooth and globally finite. So it is not a fractal structure, said Hawking. Hawking and Herthog developed a variation of this holography concept to project the time dimension in eternal inflation. This enabled them to describe eternal inflation without relying on Einstein's theory. And their new theory, eternal inflation is reduced to a timeless state defined on a spatial surface at the beginning of time. Herthog said, when the evolution of our universe is traced backward in time. At some point we arrive at the threshold of eternal inflation, where our familiar notion of time ceases to have any meaning. Hawking's earlier no-boundary theory predicted that if you go back in time to the beginning of the universe, the universe shrinks and closes off like a sphere. Still this new theory represents a step away from the earlier work. Herthog and Hawking used their new theory to derive more reliable predictions about the global structure of the universe. They predicted the universe that emerges from eternal inflation on the past boundary is finite and far simpler than the infinite fractal structure predicted by the old theory of eternal inflation. If confirmed by further work, the results would have far-reaching implications for the multiverse paradigm. We are not down to a single unique universe but how our findings imply a significant reduction of the multiverse to a much smaller range of possible universes," said Hawking. This makes the theory more predictive and testable. However, with Hawking gone, it is now up to Herthog to continue the work. Meanwhile, Musk also has some interesting views about the multiverse theory. He thinks we are all trapped in a matrix-like pseudo-experience. He revealed this on a podcast session with Joe Rogan, who he sometimes hangs out with. According to Musk, the universe being 13.8 billion years old means any civilizations that may have risen throughout the cosmos, they had enough time to hone their technological know-how. He said, if we assume any improvement rate, then games will be indistinguishable from reality or civilization will end. It could only be one of the two. This means we are most likely in a simulation because we exist. He added, I think most likely this is just about probability. There are many, many simulations you might as well call them reality, or you could call them multiverses. Musk thinks the substrate or whatever is powering the simulations is probably boring compared to the simulation itself. He based this on our experience with video games. Most gamers play because the game is more interesting than the real world. For example, folks who never fought a battle get a kick out of playing war games. Same with racing gamers who enjoy tearing down highways and crashing their cars with reckless abandon because they can't do any of these in real life. So if we are in a simulation, then we probably live a more exciting life than the folks controlling them. Remember that the next time you feel bored, do you really think there could be another copy of you out there? Leave your thoughts below in the comment section. And if you are interested into more space exploration, subscribe and leave gravity behind and join me as I help foster the next generation of explorers. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching.